Okay, so what you saw in the previous video, video 7a, was all about the celestial coordinate system and which coordinates do we use. They taught you about longitudes, or at least circles of right ascension, which is equivalent to the longitudes on the Earth, and they told you about angles of declination north and south of the equator, which is equivalent to latitudes on the Earth. They said the right ascension angles start at a zero degree angle, at a zero line or a zero degree circle, but they didn't say where that circle was. Now that circle is anchored to what we call in celestial uh, coordinate systems the first point of Aries. And the first point of Aries is a point fixed in the, amongst the stars, which doesn't move away, and it stays there all year round. The thing is, this first point of Aries also moves around, which I'll try and explain in the next uh, movie clip. So the whole thing starts with the Earth's movement around the Sun. And... As it, the, as it moves around the Sun, it seems as if the plane of the ecliptic, which is normally at 23.5 degrees to the Earth's uh, equator, it seems as if that changes. And I'll try to show you in this video exactly how it would seem to us if we were looking up and we could actually see the ecliptic. ecliptic. And the first point of Aries, that fixed point in the sky, is exactly when the Earth is there at the vernal equinox and the Sun points at that fixed point in the sky which we call the first point of Aries then uh, celestial time starts for the year so I'll try and explain that also in a later video but for now uh, a little bit of what was said of the ecliptic in the first video uh, in the first clip of the first video, but we will try and explain what the ecliptic is in this coming video. The ecliptic is where the sun moves through the year, apparently. It looks like it's going through that. And what is an important point is that point where the sun crosses the equator from the southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere. That uh, right there is what we call the first point of Aries. Now on any globe you'll see it sitting there on the zero meridian but in actual fact this is not a stationary thing. This point although on a globe they put it on, on the Greenwich meridian and the equator this point actually moves and it, it changes during the year uh, as you'll see. So let's look at this system from our point of view on the Earth. I placed myself at the origin, which is at a longitude of zero degrees and on the equator. Now, you'll notice my zenith right at the top there. I'm lying on my back on the lawn and I'm looking straight up. That is my zenith. And you can see the north and east and south and west cardinal points and I've also drawn in the ecliptic and my prime vertical because I'm on the equator my prime vertical is in actual fact the equator notice the prime vertical and the meridian cross at the zenith right at the top Good, and I'm looking at a date of 6 January 2020. And what we're going to do is we're going to move on with the dates and see what happens to that, which is the first point of Aries, which is that point which I showed you earlier on where the, where the sun crosses from uh, south to north across the equator 
and you'll see that point stays on the equator all the time so as I move every day at exactly 12 o'clock that's what happens to that ecliptic and then notice when we get to the 22nd of March and the 21st of March somewhere between those two my ecliptic and the equator and the zero degrees meridian all become one spot in other words that first point of Aries is now directly above my zenith and this again that's exactly that point and that point happens like it's drawn on the globe on the 22nd or 21st or 22nd of March every year and you'll see as the year goes on it moves away again now if we put an equatorial grid on there uh, you'll see that these circles the ones between the North Pole and the South Pole is my hour circles and these curves are my declinations north and south of the equator now if you're standing at the equator exactly this is what you'll, you'll be able to see the North Pole as well as the South Pole now notice what happens when these things start moving as time moves on you'll see the hour circles move past my meridian and along the equator and and you'll see the meridian or the ecliptic seems to be moving in from our perspective if we put the solar system objects back in there you can see that they move continuously as well and you'll notice the Sun stays on the ecliptic let's go back a bit in time to February the 25th and you'll notice that the first point of Aries sits over there it's exactly 12 noon so and the Sun is very very close to the meridian where it normally crosses at 12 noon and the first point of Aries is not close to the Sun okay let's see what happens uh, when time starts moving let's move hourly first and you can see and I'm now on February the 26th again 12 o'clock the first point of Aries is slightly closer to the Sun and let's go by day fourth you can watch the first point of Aries closely if we go the first the sixth the seventh eight nine you see Aries is now very much closer to the Sun which is very much nearly on to the meridian and then and you can see this whole lot moving closer and closer together until I get to the 22nd if I now move in there you'll see that the Sun and the equator and the first point of Aries is exactly in the same spot in the sky and that's what happens throughout the year the same thing happens on the other side of the earth on the 22nd of September so with the hour circles and the declinations and the ecliptic actually defines our celestial coordinate system because the declinations and the hour circles determine 
position in the sky and the first point of Aries determines time. That is where our celestial time originates. Okay, there you have it. All about the ecliptic and the first point of Aries, your right ascension circles and your declinations. In the next video or a later video when related to time, we'll have a better look at the first point of Aries and what it does throughout the year. But the next video is will be about your uh, observer's coordinate system, altitude and azimuth, and then eventually how do we relate altitude and azimuth to right ascension and declination. Don't miss it. Bye.